Hi, I'm Kurt Blattenberger and I run the airplanesandrockets.com website. I'm going to make a short demonstration on the method I use for doing a silk span and dope covering job. There's a lot of good written tutorials you can find in books and on the internet, but I really haven't found any good videos to demonstrate the technique. So we're going to use this Manzano Laser Works Sop with Camel Biplane uh, as the test subject here. It had originally been covered with olive drab monocoat, but I had a little accident and broke off a wing tip. So I took the opportunity to just strip off all the monocoat and I'm going to put on a more authentic looking uh, silk span and dope job this time instead. It was also originally a three channel radio control that uses an electric power. Uh, and instead I converted it to control line. You can see the the exit holes for the lines here. Uh, it's probably a little safer with me at the controls being at the end of a couple of wires rather than radio control. I'm going to go over a quick uh, explanation of some of the materials and the tools that we're going to use. I'm going to be using nitrate dope to do the initial attachment of the silk span on the uh, all of the surfaces, both the open framework area and the solid. And if you read the material on the two different dopes, the nitrate and butyrate, uh, nitrate tends to have the better adhesion properly initially, and it also is nice because on, again, for the open bay areas, it has a good high shrinkage rate uh, initially, and then once it's dry and most of the volatiles have evaporated from it, it pretty much stops the shrinking process. So on lightweight framework like this, and even on some of the, uh, the free flight rubber powered planes, like this is an old Sparky, Comet Sparky, uh, some of these other frameworks, if you were to use a butyrate type dope on that, since the butyrate continues to shrink uh, throughout its lifetime, it ends up uh, twisting and warping the surfaces, and in extreme cases it can actually break some of the underlying balsa structure. So I'm going to go ahead and use for the first couple clear coats the nitrate uh, on here, and it's fine because nitrate is not hot fuel proof like butyrate is, but since it's electric, and in the case of the free flight rubber powered planes, uh, there's, there's no hot fuel involved, so it just doesn't matter. Now I am going to be using butyrate dope on the finish color uh, application because as far as I know there's no colored nitrate dope available commercially. You can probably buy pigments to uh, add to it if you need to. But even on the full size planes uh, usually the nitrate is applied uh, on the first few coats and for the attachment covering attachment process and then butyrate is added over top of that. For the thinners, again, you can look online and find all kind of suggestions for some DuPont type of automotive thinners uh, that people have found have, have worked successfully both for nitrate and butyrate. And that's highly dependent on the quality of the thinner. If, if you look at the, the ingredients uh, for both the nitrate and the butyrate, you'll see uh, things like uh, toluene, acetone, in the case of, of butyrate, you'll find MEK, which is methyl ethyl ketone. And so a lot of those are actually, they will work as thinners, but by themselves, they tend to not do as good a job. At least that's been my experience. And particularly if you go and buy a, uh, say, acetone or MEK at a, one of the home stores, that's a very low end uh, material and it, it's good for cleaning brushes and, and cleaning up generally, but nobody recommends actually using it to thin the products that you're going to use to work with. I've had problems in the past using some of the, the other commercial type thinners for the dope and it ends up sometimes giving a, a coarser finish uh, on, on the dope and it takes a little more sanding. So I've found that, especially for the small models that I use, it's even though it's four or five times more expensive per gallon or so to buy the, the thinner from the manufacturers, I go ahead and, and just spend the money because it's not worth the risk to me of the extra time and uh, perhaps disaster that might uh, ensue from using some of the cheaper materials. 
Um, as far as tools go, it's pretty much the standard model building uh, set. I got a nice, good, sharp X-Acto blade. Uh, you need to start out with a brand new one because especially when you're trimming the silk span while it's wet, it's very susceptible to tearing. And I even generally use just a, a free number 11 blade and I put some tape on the handle because when you lay these blades down, they disappear on the workbench very easily and it's a real pain going hunting for it when the silk span's wet and you're in a hurry. Uh, a good sharp pair of scissors, ones that the only thing they're ever used for is cutting lightweight tissue and these have never cut a piece of paper or anything other than Japanese tissue for the uh, rubber powered planes or silk span for the heavier planes. Um, stirring stick. The tack cloth is it's the same kind you can get in Walmart in the paint section or at any of the automotive stores and it's absolutely essential not necessarily for the initial covering coats but as you put on the successive full coats it's, it's uh, absolutely essential in order to keep the dust level down both from the previous coats and sanding or anything that might fall from the air and also prior to doing any of the covering at all I recommend on the smaller models to use compressed air either in a can or I happen to have a, a little three gallon uh, compressor downstairs that I use and just blow it all off because the advantage over trying to use a, a vacuum cleaner is that the vacuum just can't get into all the nooks and crannies and especially on these smaller lighter weight models there's a good chance that it's going to break something and the vacuum or the, the Compressed air will also blow stuff that's sitting inside the grains or deep in the nooks and crannies of the fuselage out of there so they're not going to dislodge during the painting process and end up falling into your, your dope and messing up the job. So on the biplane these wings are permanently fixed both the upper and the lower so it makes the covering process a little bit more difficult. So we're going to be covering them in pieces, say from the wing root out to the inside of the, the wing strut, and then there'll be another piece from the wing strut out to the last wing rib, and then a separate piece all together for the wing tips themselves, because the wing tips um, are compound curve areas. There's not a lot of curve on these, but unlike the, the wings where the curve is only in one direction, and so you really only need to have the latitude to draw the tissue out in one way or the other. With the wing tips, it's nice to be able to have some lateral movement as well to really try to pull as much of the wrinkle out as possible. And of course, during the drying process, it'll shrink and should take out uh, all the rest of the wrinkles with no problem. What I did to make the whole process easier too is I cut out a kind of a kit of parts of the silk span here. I cut everything about an inch larger than it needs to be. So I have all the individual pieces ready to go here and I have marks on them just alphabetical with a list on a sheet of paper I made so that I don't have to go fumble through it and try to figure out which part was meant for which area on the airplane when it comes time to cover. I've already started, I, I put some of the silk span on the bottom of the upper wing already, we'll look at that in a moment, but first I want to cover the, the preparatory work for getting the silk span on, and that is to take a thin uh, uh, coat of dope, I usually do about a 50-50 uh, thinner, and I'll go over the entire framework where the dope is going to, or where the tissue is going to attach, and that makes a good basis for doing the application later on. Now since YouTube limits the video times to 10 minutes, I'm going to end it here and we'll come back and pick up there and continue with the process. Thank you. Mm -hmm.